Philippians chapter 3. I want to tell you that I love the uh, middle school up there. They turned to Philippians chapter 3. They were a bunch of girls who always wanted to put lipstick on. You know that? They started getting to that age and they started wearing lipstick. You know, that's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I tell my wife, a little bit of paint on the bar and always looks good, you know. <laughs> but, but then they started wearing lipstick. So they always put it on when they got to school. You know, the mom and daddy didn't like it. So guess what they did? Uh, they went in the mirror, went into the bathroom, and what to do? Kiss that mirror. Put their lips to the mirror. Yeah, I don't know why they do that. I guess it smooths it out. You, you girls know, I don't know. But they were going in there and they were kissing the mirror. And they got the mirror all messed up. So the, the, the principal said that was a problem. Something needed to be done. But she tried to tell them not to be kissing the mirror. And she took it, all the people that she thought was doing it in the bathroom. And, uh, the, you know, she said, it's hard to be clean. So I want to show you how hard it is to clean off that waxy lipstick off the mirror. And she, they said, they just, like young teenagers, they just cross that arm and give them that look. You know, you know that look. And she said, the maintenance man uh, took out the long handle squeegee, dipped it in the toilet, <laughs> and, and cleaned, cleaned the mirror. <laughs> there wasn't no more kissing of it on the mirror after that. <laughs> sometimes you got to sometimes you got to do things in a harsh way, don't you? Well, Paul had to get a little harsh there. Finally, and and uh, you know, that's kind of funny, but really, you do got to get harsh, you know. Finally, said Paul said in Philippians chapter three, finally, and that's you know we laugh about him being a Baptist preacher because he said finally there and still and once again in chapter four verse eight I think it means really that it was a turning point. He, it's not done. He just turned in the corner, and at the turning point, key note. Uh, you know, if he says these things about joy, uh, you know, there's 44 more, more verses in here. But, you know, the key point for all Philippians, why well, I want to teach it, is about joy. We need joy in the midst of trials. That's one thing the church needs now is joy. Yeah. Uh, we, we really need that. Even in all hell breaking loose, but uh, we don't have to be happy. Uh, I mean, happy tells them that they happen in. Joy tells them within. And, uh, but Paul had all this joy and one, three possibilities. He was a nutcase or he was lying or he had the real deal. He had, he had Jesus in his heart. And the secret that we should know was that uh, they say the, the, had a buddy that was in the submarine. And that's one thing I never would want to do, be in the submarine. I never, uh, I never would want, I, never, I wouldn't even go into the the battleships, God didn't like to be closed up. But uh, they said when you get so deep in the sea, they like to call the cushion of the sea. It's calm. Don't matter how the hurricanes is, how the waves are, you go so deep, they're cushioned. And that's where Paul was. He was in a cushion. He was just in a calm place. I mean, Jesus was with him. And once you get there, I mean, uh, you got joy in their relationship. But Paul talked to us about our joy should be guarded, legalism should be avoided, and our identity with Christ needs to be comprehended. You know, joy, they say that in, well, sister, we talked about a while ago. You know, in our great nation, uh, a year ago, there was, before COVID, there was over 70 to 80 people every day committing suicide, dying of suicide. Not, not talking about those who are uh, made it. They go to the most beautiful places in the world, Niagara Falls, the Golden Gate Bridge. They go to the most scenic places in the world and kill themselves. You know, they had to close off the Golden Gate Bridge. People were jumping off. They go to one of the most beautiful places in the world. And they close, they, uh, in our land, people commit suicide. And they say it increased greatly now. We don't even know how a depression. Joy. It's not about what's going on around us, it's what going on in us. And that's why joy is not automatic. Uh, it has to be learned. You have to, to know what God is talking about uh, in Philippians uh, uh, 4.11. Uh, he says, uh, well, what he's 
say, well, Dr. Holmberg's going down. He said, I have learned, you know, to be a content. Uh, but that's what Dr. Holmberg's going down. But, uh, Paul said, you know, we need to learn contentment. It's a secret, you know, that rejoice in the Lord. We should be thankful. The Bible says be thankful uh, in everything. It's not for everything. We don't have to be thankful for everything. Because the, he said be thankful in everything. Even in as Hitler destroyed that great nation of Israel and six million Jews died. You know, the world wanted to give them their land back. So guess what? All, all things does work for good for those who love the Lord. And that's how come they got their nation in 1948, the British mandate. They wanted to give that land back to Israel. Because they were so defeated and so treated so badly. And that just one guy, the first thing I thought was on day 28. We don't we kept we don't understand what's going on, but all things work for good. No, that they are joy stealers. Uh, Paul says here in Romans uh, I mean Philippians 3, finally my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same thing to you, to me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Uh, he talks about a command that we should rejoice. He talks about the character of how, uh, how we should rejoice. In the Lord, we, he said, you got to rejoice in the Lord. And a commitment, he said, for you it's good to get saved. Uh, 1 Peter 3, 1 talks about the, uh, he said that he re, uh, re, keep repeating things. You know, if I, if, if I tell something to you, that you only going to remember 20% of what you hear the first time. I, mean, I, I know that is, I'm going to preach the same sermon two weeks in a row. I said, see, see who picks up on it. She said, you don't, she said, you won't do that. I said, but they only remember 20% of what you hear the first time. But if I, I say it twice, then you're going to remember 25% of what I say. That's one quarter uh, uh, of what I say. So repetition is a good thing for a teacher to do. That's how we teach math. That's how we teach English, that's how we teach young people, by repetition. So Paul says that joy must be guarded. He said rejoice in the Lord. And uh, legalism must be avoided in verse 2. It says beware of dogs. Uh, that's the utilizer uh, of evil workers and that are concision or the mutilation. Those who does the outside mutilation. People said uh, that, you know, a lot of people that you can't be saved without being circumcised. That's just an outward sign of an inward change. That's what the circus, Paul says in Romans that is the is, is work of the heart, not of outside. That we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Jesus Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something funny, but just, I think it makes my point. Uh, there was a pastor uh, doing a baptism out in the, in the creek, out in the river, you know, doing a baptism, and a, a drunk staggered up on the baptism. And the uh, pastor said, Sir, are you ready to find Jesus? And the man said, Yes, I need to straighten up. I'm ready to find Jesus. So the pastor took, the, took him out to the river, held him beneath the water, and brought him up. The pastor said, Sir, have you found Jesus? He said, no, sir, I haven't found Jesus. Well, he pushed him down the second time. He held him down a little bit, brought him up, said, sir, have you found Jesus yet? And he said, no, sir, I haven't found Jesus yet. So he pushed him down, left him there for a while, about 30 seconds, and said, sir, I'm going to ask you, have you found Jesus yet? He said, no, are you sure this is where he went in at? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of funny, but that way we are teaching our young ones and the world that you have to search for Jesus. You have to, it's by works, it's by what we do. We need to just spread the good news that uh, Jesus saves. And uh, we, a lot of times we put works and salvation, but you know, salvation is the horse and works is the cart. If we get people saved in their heart to Jesus, guess what? They'd be wanting to volunteer. They'd be wanting to sing. They'd be wanting to take part. Uh, what we try to do in the churches now, we put the cart before the horse. 
We say it's, you've got to do better. You've got to clean up. You've got to. But we need to tell people that Jesus saves. Yes, and we get saved and the heart get right. Our heart, we, our body going to fall and our service is going to fall. I mean, it's kind of a little silly, but uh, religion often sends out their own message that Jesus is lost. We have lost Jesus. Religion has lost Jesus in the works. You know, our is by grace. And, and Paul said that we need to uh, understand and endorse in the Lord that our salvation is by grace. He talks about here, uh, I had this marked over my Bible, what would I call this? Uh, it was just plainly uh, joy stealers and grace killers. I mean, people are out there, the Judaism said you have to do certain things to be saved. And beware our dogs. This is Judaism. That kind of teach. You have to be circumcised. You have to do certain works. You, uh, a lot of people today think that uh, you have to join a church. You have to be baptized. You have to do certain things. Uh, but, you know, uh, uh, it by grace, and once you get God in your heart, you get up, uh, you get up to, uh, to do right. I heard a story, I'm going to try to tell it right, I can do it by memory, but uh, it was a, a society, a, a, a kind of much like America. A man went on vacation, he went to a beautiful place in, in uh, California, and people out there started pushing their cars. They, they said, don't you have any gas? I mean, they said, yes, but we found out that it, it, uh, it's better on the environment, it's better for your body to be built up pushing cars. And so he had a full tank of gas, but he started pushing his car. Guess what? It didn't last long. It, it wore out. It had a full, they are pushers and drivers. We used to be uh, into gas, they said, but now we are, uh, there are benefits in pushing. And, uh, you know, how joyful it would to be a pusher, they told him. And uh, he started pushing his car, but he found out that's not the way to go. And, that way we are now, people say they have a jury, you know, we need to get salvation by works. We need to clean up. And Paul said, you need to watch those people who are legalistic. That's basically, basically the pushers. They're pushing you to do things. You have to do things to, for salvation. I mean, why would you want to try to save yourself and have religion when God provided it all? You like pushing your car, having a full tank of gas. You know, God has provided that. But some people uh, want to uh, work. But I know if you got if your heart right, guess what? You are going to do something for the Lord. But Paul says here, this is very harsh, and this is kind of going to take away on this street. One thing about going verse by verse, you cover a lot of things you wouldn't normally cover. A lot of times. A lot of issues you wouldn't normally cover if you read the Bible verse by verse. And Paul said there are dogs, there are legalist people. There are Judaizers who teach in their own thing by work, circumcision, and uh, he said that we are the circumcision by, of the heart. You know, God did cut old flesh and part of our hearts out, and we worship in Him. And you know, the, this wedding ring is a sign of me being married. Now I can wear a ring and not be married, but you know, it's just an outward sign. It's an outward sign that I'm married. And, uh, you know, the work, uh, we need uh, to put no confidence in the flesh. We need to let God provide for us. Uh, well, while I'm here to tell a couple of things, I'll just tell you this. You know, this, uh, was, I heard a story too, I don't have it written down, but a story about a, uh, don't, can't get too far today because I've done, told too many stories, but it was a prince, uh, fell in love with a princess. But she was got captive. She was captive. She got put in the high tower. We talked too much about uh, Israel, and he employed two different people to help him to give a message to uh, her. One of them was a caterpillar, old crusty caterpillar. He climbed up in the mud. It started raining, and by the time he got up there, he was grumpy. He said, "Are you the, the lady in this dress?" And she said, "Yes, sir, I am." And he uh, said, I, "Well, I don't know what he's seen in you." But he's coming after you at five o'clock. You need to be ready. Real grumpy. And the next, uh, what he employed was a butterfly. And he flew up the window and said, 
that loves you for your life uh, wants to be uh, wants you to be with him forever. He said, "You do your at five o'clock and jump out into his arms." And that uh, princess said, "Well, that first messenger was so grumpy. So why was he so grumpy? You know, he said he brought the message of good news, but he was so grumpy." And that butterfly said, "Well, I used to be just like him." You know what? A lot of us Christians used to be just like that. We, we didn't have any joy. I mean, I, I'm trying to make a point here, uh, uh, illustration, because uh, I mean, we've got a we've got a message of good news, of the deliverance, of uh, salvation, eternal salvation, and yet we tell it in an old grumpy way. No wonder people don't listen. I mean, it's how we we ought to tell people and excited about a lot of things coming up. I mean, this summer of uh, being a Yes, uh, we got the same message, and we need to get it out. We, uh, he said, I was the same way before God changed me. A lot of Christians need to be grown, and just to go to the point of grace, that we got a good message to bring out. Let's tell people, and let's do it out of love, and let's do it. Put a smile on your face. Tell them God loves them. You know, you know they, uh, we're going to start visiting again. We decided, I'm excited to start visiting but you know churches you know what churches grew in the midwest they did a survey it wanted the, 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 the denomination it wanted the preachers it wanted the location it said when people come to the church and they felt welcomed and loved and they heard the word of god that's what people want people don't want to walk in and People say, well, nobody shook my hand. Nobody said anything to you. Well, what did you do? Did you shake anybody's hand? Did you smile at anybody? And what grade are you in? Be nice. It goes a long way. But we got a great message to take out to the world. And uh, Paul talked about his pedigree here. He said, though I might not have the confidence of flesh, if any man think it, he has to care for my trust in the flesh, I'm more. Circumcised on the eighth day. He said, you know what? The people who uh, uh, came to, to know Christ later on, they were circumcised when they uh, come to know Christ. Uh, uh, he said, I was a, a, a Jew. I was born. I was circumcised by the law on the eighth day, just according to the law of God. He said, uh, I was in the stock of Israel. I was a Jew. of the tribe of Benjamin. Guess what? That's probably where he got his name Saul because Saul was a uh, the first king is from the tribe of Benjamin. And he said, uh, you know, I got a lot to brag about. This is not his testimony. Hebrew, the Hebrew, touches the law of Pharisees. You know, but he said concerning zeal, persecution of the church, touching the righteous, that which was by the law blameless. He said, I did everything according to the law. But then he said, what the things I, I gained to me, those I count the loss to Christ. You know that Paul, as a Pharisee, he was probably married. You know that he was, uh, was uh, they wanted the Pharisees to be married. So his wife probably left him before she died. The Bible doesn't say that he, she, he lost his marriage, he lost his position, he lost his freedom, he lost everything. He probably was a very rich man being a Pharisee. He lost it all for Christ. He said, the thing that, uh, that was gained to me, I count lost to Christ. He said, whatever this world had to offer, is nothing what I gained in Christ. Yet doubtless I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, by whom I have suffered the loss of all things. I do count thee but done nothing. He count them as nothing, as manure. You know the People uh, probably rescue uh, count manure greater than what Paul counted this old world. Uh, you know, uh, he said, all things I've counted as done. And uh, I'd be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is in God by faith, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being more confirmable to his death. You know, we talked about the Hebrew children, and Pop, uh, Patty was teaching the young people about the Hebrew children. 
You know, a lot of them didn't know their names or what the story was. And but they were so excited. But do you know what about the three Hebrew children? They had to go to the fire to get close to that poor thing. You don't know what you're going to have to go through. But I hope we get closer to God, whatever we do. So they had to go through the fire to get to that fourth man. And, and Patty did to go on teaching the young people Daniel and the lion's den. You know, the story behind that. And she's good at that. And those young people just hang on every word. And, uh, you know, but what, uh, he was probably, Paul was probably married. We don't know if his family forsake him. We lie left. He said, I am fine with what I've lost, everything, because I found Christ. If I could, if I could not find joy in Christ because of something else, uh, uh, you know, be ready to hide. You know, uh, he, he lost his uh, position, possessions, you know, uh, not our goodness, our salvation are based on what we do, but what he's done. It's not what we we can't earn our salvation. The faith will draw out works. You know, his faith, true faith produces work, what, what he's trying to say, and it's going to produce joy, too. The horse is faith, and the horse pulls along, and then works fall. If we really have a love for God and faith, we're going to have a work in our life. And that teaches the young people. Uh, you know, I'm excited what uh, coming up. Uh, these young people in our community are hungry. And they it's an ungenuous, unseated generation. We need to we need to, to uh, we need to preach the word of God. And tell this Bible that, you know what the Bible is not bored. There are hundreds of thousands of stories and if if the preacher is boring, it's the preacher, not the Bible. And uh, they are hungry for it. They, they love to hear these stories. And the main thing, we need to get people saved. And we need to let them know. We need to tell that good uh, news. If you try to to, uh, to, uh, to hook up works first, first then you uh, and justify yourself for work, then you put the cart before the horse. Tell the good news that Jesus loves you. Tell them that he saves. And you get the heart right. And... As a baby in Christ, we're going to take him and grow him and give him milk and, and then give him meat. Then they're going to be, they'll be willing to take part in church. But we got a, we got a great message to preach. And Paul said, you don't need to be legalistic. Uh, sometimes you got to just tell them the good news. And, uh, you know, by faith first, uh, what I, that I may know him. Uh, I mean, Paul knew he was going to have a glorified body one day. But he didn't talk about that glorified body that one day when Christ could uh, raise him. He talked about having a uh, a uh, the fellowship with uh, Christ now. That, uh, we need to tell people that Jesus loves us, that he uh, was crucified with, uh, for us. He rose uh, so that we might live again. And Paul said, I want to live a resurrection life. I will be raised up again on that day glorified body, no pain, no heart trouble, but you know what, like I said, the three Hebrew boys, they had to be put into the fire before they come close to the fourth man. And we will uh, have that glorified body restored finally with that day going to come, but until then, Paul said, I want to have that close walk with Jesus. I mean, I hope you have that glorified, uh, I hope you have that uh, resurrected life. Like that, what I'm saying, are you that butterfly? You that same creature? Are you are you that butterfly having a joy, have to not telling the message? Are you or are you that butterfly? Same creature. You know, can butterfly can caterpillar fly? Yes, they can. After God changes it, and uh, we ought to be like that. I'm saying we got a great message to bring. But we ought to bring it in a way that glorify God and let people see that we are, you know, His children. We got a great message, and I hope uh, this coming summer, uh, I think we're going to teach vacation Bible school. I'm looking forward to that. You know why? Because these little children need it. They are hungry for that. They really are. 
They hunger for the Word of God. It's our duty to bring the Word of God the best we can with a loving spirit.